Welcome back to the Supercoach Enough channel. In this video, we're going to do a bit of NRL buy analysis. So when we're playing Supercoach or NRL Fantasy or even Dream Team, any of the above, um, I guess one thing we, we want to keep in mind and consideration is what teams have buys. So with the NRL structure, uh, having 17 teams, it guarantees that there's at least one team on buy every week. Um, so as you can see from this image I've grabbed off uh, NRLFantasyStats.com. Um, so obviously, you know, it has the NRL Fantasy stuff, but uh, obviously this information is useful across the board. Um, you can see that uh, round one, we've got the Tigers have the buy, obviously, and not the Titans and, and so on. Uh, until we get to round 13, which is the first bye week for Origin, uh, then you can see there's seven teams on bye that week. So, um, pretty sure it's best 13 is the rule for the big bye rounds. Um, and then round 16 and 19 are the same deal. So, seven teams on the bye. Um, so, we only need to have 13 players from the, the 10 teams playing. Um, but I guess a trap that uh, I sort of fell into last year um, was not being aware of the round after the big rounds. So uh, round 14, round 17, round 20, you'll notice there's three teams on by each week. Uh, and you do have to get a full 17 playing. So I guess really if you think about them as two-week blocks, you've actually got 10 teams that are on a buy. So we want to try to target those teams in particular that uh, play both rounds during those buys. Uh, but before we get into that, we'll have a bit of a look at the overall analysis um, that I've done. So I guess as well when I'm looking at the buys, um, I like to split it up into roughly sort of four blocks, I suppose. So the first sort of 12 rounds... Um, pre-origin, um, I know a lot of people would consider as a block, but if we consider them in, I guess, two lots of six, so the first lot of six is the early rounds, um, and then the second lot of six I like to call uh, upgrade season. I've stolen that term from our AFL super coach circles. Uh, but this is the time where we're really looking to cash in on our cheapies and our value picks and starting to, to trade them in for more guns and more points as we go. So obviously looking at it in this sense gives you a bit of an idea around, particularly with your cheapies, you know, if you've got a decision to make between, say, the Dolphins and the Bulldogs, uh, I guess the Dolphins having that early buy, I believe theirs is round three. All that means is that their upgrade... Um, sort of value is one week behind the Bulldogs cheapies because obviously they've played one less game so there's one less chance for the money to increase um, so yeah so that's why we've got six teams in the early section six in the upgrade and then with Origin um, I've, I just separated it into big and little for the purpose of this analysis um, and I guess the advantage is this is looking at more for players that you want to play across the season, so your keepers. Uh, obviously, the Dolphins are the big winner, not playing in any of the big buy rounds. So round 13, oh, sorry, not having a buy, they're playing in all three big buy rounds. As the train just takes off, apologies for that. Um, so round 13, 16, 19, if you have Dolphins players in your squad, you can guarantee yourself numbers for that. Uh, best 13 round. Um, so I guess, you know, on the flip side, you've got the Broncos, Warriors, Cowboys, Storm Panthers. Um, so they're out for two of the three buy rounds, um, which obviously isn't great if you're looking to play keepers in that time. However, on the flip side, it is actually an advantage for the origin players. So if you think about the likes of Payne Haas, Nathan Cleary, they're already going to be missing those rounds because they're going to be playing Origin. So in essence, if you pick Payne Haas, Nathan Cleary, these sort of Origin keepers, 
you're only actually going to miss out on playing them for one round that you weren't already anticipating. So, you know, I think that's why the, everyone's on Payne Haas in the front row um, is because, you know, you can play him right up to round 13. You know you're not going to get him for any of the Origin games. Um, and then they only have their third buy on the run home. Um, the Cowboys are another good side because they have the two buy rounds, but their first buy doesn't come until round uh, 16, I believe. So it's, it's really late in the piece, um, which is super handy um, to play. You know, players from the start of the season right through the first origin, then you can look to flip them. So I guess the, the obviously on the other side of the team, like the Warriors, so the likes of a Sean Johnson, um, and that sort of thing, you know, you are going to miss out on them, miss out on them, and those big buy rounds. Um, and then obviously, you know, they're not going to play Origin, so um, you know, that's probably not the worst of the strong. Actually, I've probably got it the wrong wrong way around now that I say it out loud. So I forget the Dolphins, someone like the Hammer. So assuming he gets picked in the Queensland team again, he's going to miss out on three games. Plus, uh, their three buys. So you might notice as well that the Dolphins and the Bulldogs only have two buys listed here, um, and that's because um, I think it's the Bulldogs have the buy in round fifteen, and the Dolphins have the buy in round eighteen. So it's a single buy round sandwiched in the Origin period. So you know, as long as we don't have a team full of Dolphins or Bulldogs, you know, we should be able to manage those rounds with ease. So you don't really need to consider them. Um, I guess as well, you know, focusing on the run home is nice in the sense you can start looking at, you know, loading up on guns that, uh, you know, will play every game. So, you know, if you're tossing out between, say, a Latrell uh, from the Rabbitohs and uh, Tommy Turbo from the Eagles, uh, well, Latrell's going to play an extra game on that run home. So you can make a decision on, you know, do you think, Tommy's going to outscore the trail with one less game. And obviously you choose from there. So, you know, that's just, I guess, the way I initially look at it. Um, but I guess getting into the specific teams to target. Um, so for, like, the initial start, so I've just highlighted the five teams that don't have a buy before round 13. Um, and out of those, you've got the Cowboys and the Roosters that'll both play round 13, but the Cowboys also play round 14. So they've got a great run at the start of the season. Their first buy doesn't come till round 16. Um, obviously, after that, then they've got three buys in the remaining 11 or 12 rounds, if you count round 16. So obviously, they're not going to have the most value for the run home. Um, so I guess, you know, if you're... Tossing up between, you know, players that you want to keep right up through Origin. I target the Cowboys first. Um, difficulty with that is you've got the likes of Val Holmes, Ruben Cotter, um, those sort of guys that a lot of players are looking at, super coach players that is, you know, they're probably going to be playing Origin. So um, Scott Drinkwater might be a good one if you're looking to go that way at fullback. Um Trying to think who else plays for the Cowboys now off the top of my head. If you think uh, Tal Malolo is going to resurge this year without the weight of captaincy, perhaps Tommy Dearden might be a pod shout at 5-8 uh, to the start of the season. Um, yeah, so those sort of guys. I guess if a cheapie pops up, that's even better. Um, but their back line especially looks pretty settled going into this season. After that, the Roosters are a good team. They do play round 13, but have the buy in round 14. So I guess just be mindful of that. You know, if you're loading up on those teams that have the buy in round 14, um, you can potentially come unstuck um, in the sense that, uh, you know, you, you run short of the, the 17 that week. Um, after that, probably the Warriors would be the next best because although they do have the buy in the round 13, um, you know, they have a really good run of fixtures after that. So they play round 16 and 17. So, you know, if you can hold a player through the, the round 13 buy, again, like a Sean Johnson, Tohu Harris, those sort of guys, um, 
you know, you've got them for a nice run during the origin period as well. And that's generally when the Warriors do, you know, come good as a team. Obviously a bit different look now with Andrew Webster at the helm. Um, but I guess, you know, history sort of suggests that it's a good time to get on those guys. Um, and then the Seagulls, just above the Broncos. So the Broncos play the first two big, or oh, sorry, miss the first two big buy rounds. So round 13, round 16. Um, the Seagulls do play round 16, but do miss round 17. So I guess, you know, you're not going to necessarily load up on the Seagulls guys going into the, uh, the second buy round, because then you might come unstuck in round 17. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, that's just, I guess, for all of pre-origin. Once we get a bit closer to the first buy, though, um, as I said, there's seven teams that don't um, play in either round 13 or 14. So I guess the, the top pick there would be the Bulldogs, given they play round 13, 14, uh, and 16 and 17. As I said, they have that buy in round 15. So as long as you you, you don't go completely crazy on the, on the Bulldogs, um, and I guess I don't run the Bulldogs project again this year on the channel. Um, you know, they're, they're really good players to target going into the first buy um, or even hold, you know, a couple of big sort of shouts at the Dogs. A lot of people talking about a Sam Hughes type um, uh, at that super cheap price. So, you know, you probably don't want to try to flip him until, you know, that, uh, that round 19 sort of area targeting teams that have a good run home perhaps um, the Knights are probably the next best on the list uh, they do have a buy in round 16 but they do play round 19 so um, you know really handy to, to have the Knights for 13 14 17 and 19 I think they miss 20 through a buy though so you know I guess you know, if you're looking to bring in players during that first origin to hold through the uh, the origin period, you know, the Knights guys, um, Bradman Best if he doesn't get picked, Dan Gagai if he doesn't get picked, um, Tyson Frizzell if he doesn't get picked, you know, there's a few sort of fringe options there for the origin, um, but, you know, they could present a really good upside during that origin period if they're playing. Um after that, every other team does play, uh, or sorry, does have the buy in round 16 as well, um, as well as uh, some other sort of buys. So with the Eels and Dragons, I guess, you know, they have the buy in round 16. They also have the buy in round 20, um, which again isn't ideal, but um, those are their last buys. After that, they, uh, you know, have the clean run home. So if you can navigate round 20, um, and obviously around 16, the Eels and the Dragons are pretty good. But I guess because of that, you wouldn't want to load up on too many from both clubs. You know, you may want to run with, you know, a maximum of three. I don't know. I haven't crunched those sort of numbers yet. There's probably someone smarter than me that can do that. Uh, the Panthers and the Sharks are next. And arguably probably better by structure, so probably should be targeted ahead of the Eels and Dragons in that they both have an earlier buy in the season, like I think round five and six respectively, but then they both have the round 16, round 19 buy. So um, again, you don't want to be loading up a team full of Sharks and, and Panthers because you will struggle through those two origin rounds, but every other round through that origin period, you'll be sweet. Um, and although we said, you know, the Cowboys are great to target early, once we sort of get to that first buy, they sort of become you know, a bit more of a nuisance because they still have, they miss out on 16 and 19, and then they still have another buy in the last sort of eight rounds. So probably, you know, if you haven't got on the Cowboys picks by then, you know, maybe look at some of these other teams. Um, I guess then the next big point is at the second buy, um, and then this is a good time to get on the Tigers and also the Dolphins if you haven't already done so because they'll play both by weeks in uh, the sec around the second origin and the third origin. So, you know, you can guarantee yourself some good points. Um, and then I believe they both have one final buy in the run home. 
Uh, so just be mindful of that. Again, you don't want to overload on Dolphins because they do have that buy in round 18. But it's the same concept as don't overload on any one individual team. Um, after that, the Storm, the Dogs and the Raiders, all good value um, given that they've only got the one buy left at this stage and it's in round 19. Um, the Roosters and the Warriors do have a buy in round 19, but then they also have a buy in the run home. So, you know, I guess if you can cover round 19, these guys become really good picks as well, but obviously the Tigers and the Dolphins um, are the ones to target there. Uh, but then after the third buy, I guess so this is basically the start of the run home. Probably the best teams to target are the Rabbitohs, Titans, Dolphins. So the Rabbitohs and the Titans have their last buy in round 17. So you can even go a week early on them in round 18, start loading up for the end of the season. Um, so, you know, likes of Damian Cook, Cody Walker, Jack White, and if he comes good at the Rabbitohs. Um, at the Titans, you know, uh, Big Tino's the obvious target, but you see him, he plays Origin. Dave Fafida, if he's not in around the Origin squad, don't know why he wouldn't be. But um, those sort of guys, you know, they're going to obviously have a great run home. Um, the Dolphins, as we said, they play the third or they play all three big buy rounds. They also play round 20, so um, or 17 and 20, so they, they must miss them. Round 14 must be one of their buys. They have a buy in round 18 as well, and then that's it. Um, and then after that, the Tigers. So they don't have their final buy until round 26, so they've got a sort of weird draw where it's round 1, round 13, round 26 of their buys. So if you can cover round 13, you know, Tigers players might be really good to bring in as soon as round two. Um, or, you know, if you want a loophole for round one, you can run a Tigers player in your squad. Uh, and then just obviously working backwards. So the Broncos have their buy in round 24. So, you know, you bring players in, you can hold them for most of the time. Um, the Sea Eagles and the Knights do have a buy a bit closer to that uh, third big buy round. So, you know, you can bring them in, but just be mindful that you might want to then trade them out pretty soon to, uh, you know, cover their buys towards the back end of the season. But, uh, yeah, that's the, I guess, the buy analysis done and at least my thoughts on, on what players or teams to target based on those. Obviously, you know, we talked about targeting these teams at the start of the year because they can play right up to origin. But the reality is, you know, we've got to take cheapies where we can get them. We've got to take value picks where we can get them. So don't stress about these too much. It's it's really more of a tiebreaker sort of situation if you've got two players that you're tossing up between um, and you can't decide which one. Well, you know, it might factor in that, oh, the Cowboys have a really nice run at the start of the year. Um Whereas, you know, the Sea Eagles have a couple of buys that are going to be inconveniencing us around origin time. So we might go with the Cowboys pick. Um, but yeah, we'll wrap that video up at this point. So as always, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to throw them down below the video. Uh, if you're enjoying the NRL stuff, remember to give the video a like. Um, subscribe for all of our fantasy content. We've still got EPL, NBL, a bit of AFL in the mix as well. Uh, but other than that, we'll catch you in the next one.